Hey, what is up, Internet? Welcome back to the channel. Now, ever since the Galaxy S23 was launched last month, a lot of people on the Internet are of an idea that this is essentially the same phone as last year's S22. Now, I've been using this little guy for about three weeks now, and as I dived a little deeper, I realized it's not. Now, I will leave my final verdict for the full review, which, by the way, will be out super soon, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. But in this video, I'll tell you eight settings, features, or things that I found on the S23 super useful, kind of hidden, and you should definitely check them out. Let's get started. This first one is actually in the phone app. So if you open the dialer and then go to the three dot menu on the top right corner, and then go to settings, you will see an option to enable the caller ID and spam protection. Now, I'm not sure if this was already in previous versions of One UI, but the one on the Samsung S23 running One UI 5.1 works really well now honestly i have never been a fan of the true color app and now that we have this on s23 and hopefully on more samsung devices in future there is one more reason to not install it now this next one is also in the dialer app itself now if you're on the same screen where we enable the spam protection you will also see something called bixby text call now what this basically does is bixby which is samsung's virtual assistant can talk on your behalf whenever you get a call now imagine a scenario you are in a meeting or a class and you get a a call from someone very important but you can't take it now what we usually do is we decline the call send them a text message or a whatsapp message informing that we are busy and we will call them later but what you can do with the bixby text call is ask bixby to take the call on your behalf now whatever the other person is saying it will be translated into text real time and then you can type in your response and it will be again translated back to voice by samsung's text to voice service and all of this happens in real time and it's actually very impressive i use it a couple of times and even though it's only available in korea and english I do find this feature going really big, especially when it's available in more languages in future. Or this next one is rather funny because we have always seen Apple borrowing features from Samsung or Android in general. But this next one is where Samsung blatantly copied this feature from Apple's latest iOS iteration. Now, if you're in Samsung's native gallery app on the S23, and if you have a picture with maybe an object or humans, you can just tap and hold on that object or humans it, and it will automatically cut it out and then you can share it as a picture via WhatsApp or anywhere else. Or you can also save that picture as a standalone image in your gallery without the background. Now, for most bits, it works really well, especially when it comes to humans. But I would still say the Apple's version is a little better. Now, I actually don't play a lot of games on my S23, even though the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 inside this little guy is capable of some heavy gaming. But as we all know, extensive gaming, even on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, can make your device a little abnormally warm. But there is one more feature Samsung has introduced on the S23 that can help you reduce that. Now, this feature is actually buried down into the game launcher. So whenever you have a game opened on your Galaxy S23 and also have the game launcher automatically run in the background, go to the game launcher, then go to this setting called Game Booster. Here you will find something called Pause USB Charging. Now, what it basically does is instead of charging your battery at the maximum wattage, which is 20 25 watts otherwise when you have this feature on it will actually charge only at 7 watts now do keep in mind that you need to have your phone plugged in and then open the game for this feature to actually come into your game booster settings but if you play a lot of games on your s23 this feature will definitely help you keep your device a little cooler but then also extend the overall battery life cycle because now you're sending the current directly to the cpu instead of putting it all in the battery but if you're someone like me who's not into gaming and would appreciate some extra battery life this next one is for you now this is again buried in the battery settings but if you go to the settings then scroll down to battery and then scroll further down for more battery settings here you'll find this feature where you can change the performance mode from standard to light now what it basically does is it will prioritize the battery life and cooling over the performance and honestly i've been using it for a couple of days now and i've been using my phone normally as i usually do and i have not faced any stutters or lags or anything abnormal plus i do appreciate the extra battery life i get with this performance mode now, this next one is really interesting we all know that the s23 brings in the famous samsung's 
expert raw camera app that lets you click raw images right from your phone now for the unintended raw images are basically very heavy on the size and captures all the basic details so that you can edit it out on any of the photo editing software later to change the look and feel of that image but what most people don't know is whenever you click a picture from this expert raw camera app the default photo editing app is actually lightroom now it doesn't come in installed right out of the box but once you have installed it and set it up and you click a picture from this expert raw camera app you can actually jump straight into lightroom just with one tap and start editing your pictures now this next one might not seem a big deal for a lot of you but for me i was so glad samsung actually added it in the latest one ui 5.1 now notifications on lock screen notifications in general is a big deal on android right even though apple on the other hand always chooses to completely ignore it now on previous versions of android you could customize if you'd want to see notifications on a lock screen or not and what level of content you would want to see there now you can actually customize for what exact app you would want to see the notifications on your lock screen to actually customize it all you have to do is go to settings then scroll down to notifications then go to lock screen notifications and tap on this gear icon next to the show content which is where you can toggle the apps for which you want to get the notifications on your lock screen and the last one is something that actually went rather unnoticed on the s23's launch event now if you don't know s23 actually comes with a newer version of qualcomm's 3d sonic under display fingerprint scanner now it doesn't seem to be faster but it is definitely bigger than the last version now i noticed it the first time when i was registering my fingerprints on the s23 because it will actually ask you to place your fingers at different sections on the screen but here have a look it will still unlock the phone even though i don't have my fingerprint completely on that thumbprint it shows on the screen but this is not just about that so if you actually happen to use a screen protector or a temper glass on the s23 you would know that it actually affects the performance of the fingerprint but if you go to settings then scroll down to display and scroll down until you see an option to enable the touch sensitivity this will actually help you use your fingerprint even with the tempered glass on your s23 now if this was not enough there is a whole lot you can do with samsung's good lock module do let me know if you want me to make a dedicated video on that and subscribe to tkinet if you don't want to miss that video out whenever i plan to upload it but if you have not been introduced to the world of bixby routines i'm dropping in a video you should definitely check this out especially if you own a Samsung flagship. Thank me later.